Hi, my name is Maria Natera, and today I'm going to be showing you some techniques for the rotator cuff and a little bit of anatomy and physiology. I like to start off right away. I've used some oil, my own special blend of essential oils, and I am going to do a little bit of effleurage and petrissage to warm up her muscles. And I like to go to the supraspinatus right here on the posterior part, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor. So from this position, you can access all the posterior muscles and also some of the anterior muscles. Now the four rotator cuff muscles are the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. Out of all four muscles, three of them are in a scapular fossa, except for the teres minor. You also have your coracoid process right here, that's part of the scapula, her acromion process, which really shows nice on her, and her clavicle. Right here on the coracoid process, you have three attachments. You have the origin of the pec minor on ribs three, four, and five, and it inserts at the coracoid process, and the origin of the biceps, the short head of the biceps, starts at the coracoid process and inserts at the radius and the coracobrachialis origin right here and it inserts at the medial shaft of the humerus. So while you're here you can go ahead and massage this too because a lot of people have you know a lot of pain right here especially if they have been playing tennis or baseball players or reaching even to the back seat of their car when they hyperextend their arm this area here may get um, injured and strained. And what I want you guys to understand is that the rotator cuff muscles sandwich the scapula in between. So you have three in the back and one in the front on the anterior part of the scapula, the other three on the posterior part of the scapula. Out of the four rotator cuff muscles, three of them are on a scapular fossa, and one of them is not, which is the teres minor is the only one that's not in a scapular fossa. So while you are here, you can go ahead and do a little uh, friction and petrissage and effleurage. This also has the largest tendon attachment of the subscapularis, which is right here. So I'm gonna put her arm in a high position to show you how you can access the subscapularis. So I'm gonna reach on the back part of her arm and reach to the medial border of her scapula, pull it out laterally, and I'm gonna palpate her subscapularis and we drew it for you so you guys can really get a better view because most people it's hard for us to picture you see pictures of muscles and you can't figure out how they which one it is so right here is the subscapularis and I can feel her scapula right underneath my hand so you can go ahead and palpate very gently you have your axillary artery right here so you want to make sure that you don't feel a pulse and if you feel a pulse you stay off of it so you can do some pressure, a little bit one inch strips. You can apply pressure with the palm of your hand and just massage it and be very gentle because this is really tender on people that are injured. And so you can see the muscle fibers going up and then it inserts right here at the lesser tubercle of the humerus. And you can work this one inch strips, your hands, you can do a little bit of friction. You can do some effleurage and petrissage right there to really make sure and you get this. People with adhesive capsulitis, which means frozen shoulder, you can also help them because uh, these muscles here are really tight. And if you loosen them up, you'll be able to get more mobility in their uh, rotator cuff. Remember that this is a ball and socket joint, so it's got the greatest range of motion. However, it's also the easiest to dislocate, so you wanna be careful and gentle. And here the clavicle is the easiest bone to break. Now I'm gonna show you another way that you can access the subscapularis. You put her, the client's arm on your shoulder and you reach underneath to grab the medial part of the scapula and you pull out laterally and you ask your client to move this arm to the opposite shoulder so it brings out the scapula and I'm really in there. I am going in about three or four inches now. It's loosened up a little bit so I can really go in there and massage medially, laterally, 
you know, just gently though, however much um, pain tolerance your client can handle. You don't wanna go above a five or a six on a scale from one to 10, because then you engage the um, nervous system and it starts releasing endorphins, and you don't wanna do that. You wanna create healthy patterns, not more pain patterns where the nervous system gets involved. So you can still see the subscapularis here that we drew underneath. I am getting the lateral border and I am trying to reach in as far as I can, as far as she'll let me. By the time you've worked this for a couple of minutes, it's loosened up so I can really get in there. So this is another angle that you can get to the subscapularis and the posterior uh, supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor are on the posterior part. So now we've turned your client on the sideline position. You want to make sure that you're supporting the cervicals, that her back is nice and straight from C1 to C7, from T1 to T12 and the lumbar area. And you want to have the top leg supported and the bottom leg straight so that she doesn't put pressure on her hip. From here, you can really access all the three posterior rotator cuff muscles. From here, you can really see the scapula and you can see the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor. We have the spine of the scapula right here, and the supraspinatus is on this fossa, the infraspinatus is in the, this fossa, and the only one that's not in a fossa is the teres minor. You can really warm these muscles up. You even have access here to the uh, levator scapula. You can do one inch strips. You can massage the upper trapezius right here, and you can really get to the supraspinatus right here on top. And as you can see, it goes from the medial part and underneath a, a chromium process, that's why it's not drawn all the way, because it goes underneath a chromium process and it inserts at the greater tubercle of the humerus. So it goes from here, it goes underneath, and it inserts right there. This originates here, and it goes also to the greater tubercle of the humerus. And the teres minor is from here, is the pink one, all the way to the greater tubercle. So this is the attachment. So when they tear an attachment, it will be right here, an insertion. So you can access all three muscles from this angle, and you can massage them. You can do uh, with, your, with your knuckles. You can do some figure eights. You can do some skin rolling from this angle. You can also access the serratus posterior superior, the rhomboids minor, rhomboids major, the erector spinae, and you're, all I'm doing is just pushing a little bit right here so her scapula can really come out. And you can get to the, all the rotator cuff muscles, the three posterior ones. To access the subscapularis, you put her arm, she can hold it by the elbow, make sure it's in a straight line that it's not way over here or way over here that is also in a nice angle so you're not um, hyperextending her arm. And you're gonna reach, you're gonna put, you don't wanna do 90 degree angles, you just wanna push lightly and go on the anterior part of the scapula and that's another way that you can access the subscapularis which is right here. And like I said, you can do one inch strips, palpating gently. You can do the money, like a money sign right here with your thumb and your fingers to really access even the teres minor and major right here and the subscapularis. So this is another angle that you can really get in there to, to palpate the subscapularis. So this is from the sideline position. So I am just working right here all along the scapula and accessing the three major muscles of the rotator cuff and then you can access the anterior one, the subscapularis right here. Okay, so now we've turned her into a prone position and I've got, again, some of my special blend of oils with essential oils. And you can really see her scapula here. You can see the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor, which are the three posterior rotator cuff muscles. And right here, you can also access the upper trapezius 
and the levator scapula. If you just push up lightly, you can get to the origin of the levator scapula underneath. Because this muscle, a lot of times when they have pain up on top of the shoulder, it's either the supraspinatus or the levator scapula. So you can access that right here. You can do one inch strips all the way up to the occipital ridge. And that really relieves a lot of pain. You can get to the rhomboids right here and the erector spinase. The most superior muscle is the trapezius, which starts from T12 to here to here. So you're covering like three or four layers of muscles. Remember, muscles are in layers. So right here, you're accessing, again, the rotator cuff muscles, and they originate right here on the medial part of the scapula, and they all insert at the greater tubercle of the humerus. So you wanna make sure and get the tendon attachments right here because that's one of the places where it really hurts when people have problems with their shoulder. You also want to move their arm forward to reach. I'm going to show you another way to reach the subscapularis. So their arm is just hanging lightly off the table. You're going to pull on the medial part of the scapula just a little bit out. You're going to curve your fingers very gently so where you can palpate real gentle on the anterior part of the scapula. You can really see, now that her um, muscles are warmed up, I can really get in there. I'm going in like three or four inches. If you can see, my fingers are really in there. And I can really go back and forth, medial, laterally, horizontally. I can also do the money sign right here. Money, money, money. To be able to get the teres minor, the teres major. Now, but just remember that the four rotator cuff muscles are the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, subscapularis, and the scapula is sandwiched in between the three posterior and one anterior of the scapula. You always want to assist your client's arm when you bring it back. And if you are going to continue doing a little bit of effleurage and petrosage on the arm, remember that we always go centripetal towards the heart on all of the appendages on all of the arms and legs. We go towards the heart. Pressure must be towards the heart because we have little valves that close to prevent backflow from going back. So you don't wanna do damage and go against those valves. You wanna be able to go forward and towards the heart, which is called centripetal. And when you are done, make sure that you, you know, reach closure with your client, that you do your nerve ending strokes. And we've really accessed the scapula right here. And I wanted to thank Angel, our beautiful model today. I hope you learned some new techniques to help you become the best therapist that you're meant to be. Look out for my next video and please subscribe to the, my YouTube channel so you can keep updated. Thank you for hanging out with me today and see you next time.